You know, Melissa McCarthy, there is one thing I can forgive you for, and it is for being in the Happy Time Murders earlier this year. And to commemorate my forgiveness to you, I'm gonna rip up this ticket stub that I still surprisingly have for when I saw the Happy Time Murders in theaters. Like, ugh. oh well, here it goes. What the? Why can't I rip this up? <laughs> Finally! Woo! <sighs> that felt good. What is up, everybody? Random Random Man here, bringing you my review for Can You Ever Forgive Me? Based on the 2008 memoir of the same name, written by Lee Israel, the plot basically follows Israel herself, played by Melissa McCarthy, as she tries to revitalize her failing writing career by forging a bunch of letters written by deceased authors and playwrights. Going into this movie, I honestly did not know what to expect. I heard rumblings of this movie come out of the various film festivals where it premiered at, and it got quite a bit of buzz for the performances from Melissa McCarthy and Richard E. Grant. I haven't even seen a full trailer for this film, and all I really knew about it was the basic concept and that it's based on a true story. This movie has gotten quite a few awards nominations as of late, including some from the Golden Globes and the Critics' Choice Awards, in particular for the aforementioned performances of McCarthy and Grant. So that is what got me interested. To Starting out with the cast and their performances, we have Melissa McCarthy as Lee Israel herself, and she is mighty impressive here. She has taken on a much more dramatic role compared to her comedic uh, performances in the past, such as in 2011's Bridesmaids, which she actually got an Oscar nomination for Best Supporting Actress for. I thought that was well-deserved either way. She was pretty hysterical. And in 2015's Spy. In case I wasn't clear with this video's cold open and me dramatically ripping up this ticket stub, which I still need to find the other half for, I was not at all a fan of the Happy Time Murders, which McCarthy starred in. In fact, I think it's the worst movie I've seen all year in theaters. Also, to be fair, there are quite a few people out there who are not big fans of Melissa McCarthy, but here in a more dramatic role as Lee Israel, I thought that not only she was very headstrong and also quite tragic in some way to how she portrayed this character, but also somewhat sympathetic. I was quite surprised of how much I was caring for this character throughout the film, even though the actions she does throughout are not exactly legal. What am I talking about? Forgery is illegal in any sense, but Either way, I think that McCarthy delivers another Oscar-worthy performance here, as does Richard E. Grant as Jack Hawk, an acquaintance of Lee Israel here, and he is very eccentric in the way he portrays his character, and I love the chemistry between himself and McCarthy. Also, as a bit of a side note, Ben Falcone, uh, Melissa McCarthy's real-life husband, does show up here in a supporting role, and he's also directed her in a bunch of her comedy movies in recent memory, and I think some of the other supporting players of this movie for the screen time that they do have fit quite nicely to the film. And one uh, cast member in particular who surprised me showed up in this film was Christian Lee Navarro from the Netflix series 13 Reasons Why. The writing in this film from Nicole Hofkinner and Jeff Witte is very punchy in the way it does set up the story, but also in how we are presented with Lee Israel as a character herself. As the movie begins, we see that she has lost her job and she's really down on her luck as her writing career has not gone anywhere as of late as this movie picks up in 1991 in New York City. And yeah, Israel was once a successful writer, but now she is seeing herself in a bit of writer's block, but at one point, one character in the movie describes that term as an excuse for writers being incompetent for not shelling out good work. But yeah, either way, Israel is really not in the best of spots within her own career. But then it doesn't take long for her to discover some old letters and she ends up forging a bunch of them so that she is able to get quite a bit of money for taking care of her cat, uh, paying off her rent, and just having money in general. 
As I've mentioned before, these actions are simply criminal, and though they are presented in not the most glamorous of lights, it does get us, or at least it got me, to sympathize with Israel as a character. And all the while, too, with the rest of the writing, it is darkly funny. And yeah, McCarthy is known for comedy herself, but a lot of it has been slapstick as seen with Bridesmaids and Spy. But here, with just the verbal humor and the dialogue she spews out at a bunch of moments in the film, some of her lines are pretty witty. I will say that it did take a little bit to get into that main plot thread that the movie carries. I would say about 30 minutes go by until this uh, moment of the movie does amp up. And once the film does reach that point, the performances get stronger, the movie gets a lot more interesting, as it's uh, crazy to think that this actually happened. And I did not know much about the story in the first place going in. So it was really nice to be able to learn something about this character. This is all helped out by the direction from Marielle Heller. And she focuses the narrative quite nicely in terms of making us feel like we are in the position of McCarthy's Israel and also the setting of 1991 New York City. As going into some of the technical merits of the film, the movie looks quite nice with its cinematography, its production design, um, the costumes even, even though it takes place in the early 90s, it's not that extravagant in terms of how these characters look with what they're wearing. I still thought it fit the time period that this movie is taking place in. Even right down to the hair and makeup of this movie, like the uh, hairdo that Melissa McCarthy's Israel has throughout the film is quite distinct for taking up a huge portion of her head, but I thought that was well done. And same thing goes with the original score of this movie. The ambience of the music uh, showing up in more prevalent moments to where the tension is running high, I thought was neatly uh, used. Running time-wise, I think this movie ran mostly well at about an hour and 45 minutes. And like I've mentioned, it did take a little bit for the movie to speed up into its core narrative. And that's really, I would say, the main issue I have with the movie. It can have a tendency to slow down at times, but it's more notable in the first section of the movie where we are uh, getting to know Israel and even uh, Richard E. Grant's uh, Jack Hawk. But all in all, I've gotta say that I really enjoyed Can You Ever Forgive Me? As someone, again, who did not know much about the subject matter going into it, it was quite a treat to be able to see this real life story be played out on the big screen. I think Mario Heller has crafted a solid biopic here that was quite interesting to see with a character like this who isn't the most uh, squeaky clean of individuals, but it ultimately got me to care for Israel and it's bolstered by the performance from McCarthy as her Richard E. Grant in a great supporting role, some of the rest of the writing, the technical merits, what have you, it all came together to what I think is a film that is easily worth watching for the performances alone. As I said in my previous review for The Favorite, award season is shaping up as 2018 is drawing to a close, and I think we are more than likely gonna hear Melissa McCarthy and Richard E. Grant have their names called come the Oscar nominations when they are announced, and for all of what I have said, I definitely recommend Can You Ever Forgive Me? My final verdict for Can You Ever Forgive Me is four out of five stars. Thank you all, as always, for watching. Be sure to like this video, comment on what you thought of Can You Ever Forgive Me? Social media links in the description. Subscribe to my channel for more, and I'll catch you on the next movie review.